started. And uh, so let's talk about let's talk about uh, the data link layer. You and I know that uh, we are on the OSI layers. We are on the our uh, seven OSI layers, and that is from um, layer number one is the physical layer, which we did talk about yesterday. And actually, we did talk about it the other day. And uh, again, I didn't say just welcome to uh, this class, uh, Kenyatta University uh, class. So the OSI layers are seven, starting from the physical layer. Um, uh, layer one, layer two is the data link where we are today. You know very well at layer two is where we find the switch. So expect us to talk about the switch as well. Layer two is also where we have the MAC address. We also call it, remember, the layer two address, and we also call it the data link layer address. Um, layer number three is the network layer, that which we'll be talking about, uh, God willing, tomorrow. Uh, and expect us to talk about the IP address at layer three uh, as the address of layer three, and expect us to talk about the um, router, the router, which is a layer three device. All right. So that is very, very important. From layer three, we will go to layer four, which is at the transport layer, where we'll talk about TCP and UDP protocols. Then we go to layer five, which is the session layer, presentation, uh, session, presentation, and finally, uh, application layers. So without much ado, let's look at what objective do you have for this uh, chapter here. So we'll I'll explain how media access control in the data link layer supports communications across networks. And so we'll have three uh, main objectives here. We look at the what is the purpose of the data link layer, what are some of the technologies uh, found within the data link layer, and uh, we look at the frame. You know, what is the structure of the frame within the data link layer frame? All right. Remember, we did talk about the frame before. If you guys can remember, when we talk about what is called PDUs, the protocol data units, protocol data units is the name of the message or the name of the uh, uh, message as it travels from one OSI layer to the next. If you can remember very well, we say that at the application presentation and sessions, the name of the data of the traffic is just called, of the message is called data. All right. The name is called data or data stream. Then we went to the uh, transport layer, layer four. The name of the message is now called uh, segment after encapsulation. Then the message moves to, um, the, the segment moves to layer three and it after encapsulation, it's now called a packet or a, a TCP IP packet. Then the message moves to layer two where it is encapsulated and we now have a frame. We now have a frame or we call it an ethernet frame or data link a frame. Then the name, the, the, the message moves to layer one. The frame moves to layer one where everything is encapsulated to bits and the bits are the zeros and ones that we talked yesterday, talked about yesterday. So I want you to, you know, one chapter leads to the other, and I want you guys to be able to understand, you know, when you get to the data link layer, when you talk about the frame, just know that the frame is uh, after the packet is encapsulated, which therefore means that inside the frame, we have a packet, okay? Inside the frame, we have a packet. Inside the packet, we have a segment, all right? And inside the segment, we have the data stream itself. So, and that's how it is, okay? So we started from physical layer and you are traveling upwards. We keep on de-encapsulating, removing the layer to expose the previous layer. So today we are at the frame. When we go to the network layer, we'll now remove the frame and you see the packet, okay? And when you go to the transport layer, we now remove the packet and we, we, we see the segment. When you go to the application layer, remove the segment and we now see the data stream, 
very very important so let's let's kick off let's be able to see what is gonna uh, be here so the data link layer majorly is responsible for communications between one end device to another end device all right between one end device to another end device of course we know that each end device must have an nic whether it is a wireless nic or a wired nic as so long as it is an inic for one device to another device and mostly this is within the same network data link layer is used for communications within the same network and that is also the function of the mac address so the other function of course of the data link layer is that since below the data link layer we have the physical layer therefore the data link layer allows upper layer protocols okay like protocols within uh, the network layer uh, the ip version 4 and version 6 so upper layer protocols it allows them to access the physical medium remember the three types of medium the fiber optic copper and wireless okay so it is the data link layer that is in between the applications of the upper layers and the lower layer which is the physical layer all right finally data link layer also performs some error detection okay so that wherever any frame is being forwarded or forwarded and it has some error it will be rejected the frame will be rejected because it lacks integrity and so our devices also have a level of <coughs> integrity amongst them that we must always pay keen attention to okay so that is uh yes i think important for you guys to note now it's important to note that um the data link layer is divided into two sub layers two sub layers the data link layer is divided into two sub layers remember if you look at this my diagram here below the data link layer we have the physical and above the data link layer we have the network layer but you can see that the data link layer in purple is divided into two sub layers the first one is called the logical link control sub layer llc logical link control sub layer and the lower one is called the mac sub layer media access control sub layer and you know that is where the mac address gets its name mac sub layer mac address so the word mac is always written in capital letters because it is a short form of three words media access control all right now it's important to note that the lower the, the, the each and every sub layer has its own function okay so the logical link sub layer basically communicates between uh, the network software at the upper layers and the device hardware on the lower layers so the llc has been communication within the uh, the network software found on the upper layers like the network layer and the hardware found on the lower layers within the physical layer okay while the mac sub layer the mac sub layer it is responsible for one data encapsulation it is the one that encapsulates the frame uh, the, the packet to form what is called the frame the frame and it of course it also controls how the upper layers can access the media you know the media is found in the physical layer and that's where we find the fiber optic copper wireless and all that so to control access to the media it is the function of the mark sub layer the mark sub layer so those are the two sub layers that we do have um, within ieee now it's important to note that um a router normally we want to look at how does a router perform the process of encapsulation and de-encapsulation since normally a router has uh, normally a router will always have an interface connected to a cable or can be copper or fiber optic okay so how does a router uh, i mean uh, how does it perform the process of encapsulation and de-encapsulation so let me explain that to you so you know that when a packet comes in through the interface it comes through the media 
uh, in form of uh, zeros and ones. Those are the bits. And when it gets to the interface, the interface will, ac will accept the de-encapsulated bits into a frame. OK, so the interface will accept the frame. Which has been de-encapsulated from the bits. OK. So once the frame has been accepted from the medium, then the router needs to open the frame, which means the router needs to open the frame because I've told you inside the frame we have a packet. So the process of removing the outer layer of the frame to expose the packet is what we call de-encapsulation. So the router will de-encapsulate the frame to expose the packet, which is encapsulated inside. All right. So what the router needs to see, because the router has a special table called a routing table. OK. The router has a special table. It's called a routing table. Now, the routing table is what makes the router to do its job. OK, because the routing table has different routes or routes that the router can use to send a packet or a message outside of it. I want you to note from today that the router is the only device that can connect one network and another network. That should be clear enough. And so what normally happens is that the router is going to de-encapsulate the frame to view the packet. And on the packet, the router needs to see the source and destination IPs, especially the destination IP. Where is this packet going to? And through which interface is the router going to forward it? Once the router has known the destination IP address, then the router needs now to do something next, something that we learned, I don't know, I think the day before yesterday, where I was telling you that the MAC address changes from router to router, but the IP address remains the same due to the process of encapsulation and the encapsulation. So the router removes the frame. Remember the frame has a uh, source and destination MAC address. Uh, looks, inspects the packet, and then the router re-encapsulates the packet with a new frame, which has a different source and destination MAC address. So it will re-encapsulate the packet with a new frame. Once the new frame has been put on top of the packet, which now has a new source MAC address and a new destination MAC address, then that's when the router will forward the new frame onto the medium, to the next device, to the next device. This is something that I want you guys to learn over and over because it is important. It's very, very important that you get to note some of these small things. Very, very uh, important. Now, we talked about a topology and we said a topology is just a network diagram. A topology is a network diagram. So we do have some few topologies here. We, of course, already talked about the difference between a physical topology and a logical topology. And we did say that a physical topology is a network diagram that shows the physical connections and how devices are interconnected, while a logical topology basically does not show us the exact physical location of our devices and cables. No, it identifies the virtual connections, including the IP addresses and how uh, a network addresses and which interfaces have uh, been uh, assigned those IP addresses. Now, we do have some one topologies, topologies within the wide area network. We'll talk more about these ones in our final module in CCNA3. But for now, we'll only look at point to point. Of course, we will come to talk about hub and spoke and uh, mesh topology. So the point to point is a very simple network diagram. We have a router in Kisumu and another router in Nairobi. And you need to connect those two routers, OK? Mostly using fiber optic cable. So we'll have a cable that runs from Nairobi to Kisumu, all right? Joining those two, that is called a point-to-point -point, uh, topology. For the hub and spoke, hub and spoke looks like a star. We have one router in the middle. Then this router is now connected to so many other routers all around, OK? So that it forms something that looks like a star. So it's like so many point to point that are all joined to one particular site. Then we have the mesh topology. You know, if you want to talk about the mesh topology, it looks like a wire mesh. 
in our wire mesh, we have so many crisscrossing lines and the mesh topology provides a very great degree of viability because all the sites, all the routers are actually interconnected to each other to form a mesh. But don't worry, we will talk about that later on in our uh, enterprise networking, security and automation <laughs> model. Uh, so point to point basically looks like this. The first node connected to another node and very long distance and they are all you know connected all over uh, through the network within the LAN we do have the following topologies we have a star topology within the LAN so the other ones are within the one remember one is wide area network and LAN is local area network so within the LAN we can always have a star topology and you can see the diagrams here if you connect two star topologies you form what is called an extended star topology of course we have the bus and the ring topologies these ones are um, uh, legacy technologies the word legacy in networking means an older protocol or an older technology okay so the bus and ring topologies are a bit legacy legacy means they are really being used nowadays really being used nowadays now, I want to talk about two things here. One is called the half, and the other one is a full duplex. Full and half duplex. To understand what a half duplex means, you imagine of the thicker superhighway being having only one lane. You know, a highway with only one lane. It means only one vehicle can move at a time. We cannot have two vehicles moving in the opposite direction. Why? Because there's only one lane. So half duplex, a network that has half duplex, it means only one device can transmit over the network at a time. We cannot have multiple devices sending or transmitting and receiving traffic. That is half duplex. This type of topology, I mean, this type of communication, half duplex, where only one device can send or receive at a time, and it cannot do uh, both concurrently. We call it half duplex. Why is it important? Because wireless, Wi Fi uses this kind of technology, the half duplex. I will explain to you later on why is it that the more people that increase on our Wi Fi, the, the, the slower the Wi Fi becomes, and the fewer people there is on the Wi Fi, then the faster it is. I'm going to explain to you that about that. Apart from WLAN, or which is wireless local area network, uh, 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 ordinarily known as Wi-Fi, we also have what is called the Ethernet hubs. The Ethernet hub is a device that was that was there before the switch came. All right, we used to have a device called a hub, and the hub was there before the switch was uh, uh, before the switch was manufactured. Since the switch came, we no longer use hubs because hubs were very very slow right mm -hmm. and let's talk about full duplex so for full duplex uh this is whereby both devices or two devices can simultaneously transmit and receive traffic on a shared medium okay and our switches nowadays operate on full duplex, unlike the hubs that were operating on half duplex. And that is why in a network connected to cable, okay, a cable network connected to Ethernet cables, it can never get slow. Even if more users join the network, it rarely gets slow. Unlike a Wi-Fi, which works on half duplex and gets slower because of that technology. Now, I want to take you through, guys. We have two contentious based methods which work with the the half duplex whereby for the wireless LAN it works with a, a technology called CSMA stroke CA the wireless LAN or the Wi-Fi works with what is called the CSMA stroke CA career sense multiple access with collision avoidance career sense multiple access with collision avoidance That is CSMA stroke CA. Career sense multiple access stroke CA. The old Ethernet hubs 
we used to work with what's called the CSMA stroke CD. Career sense, multiple access with collision detection. Career sense, multiple access with collision detection. So one is CD and one is CM. One is collision detection and one is collision avoidance. I want you to don't bother so much about the big terms here. Just know that one of them avoids a collision from happening. Whatever two devices are trying to come, because all of them are half duplex, which means only one device can send and transmit. So what we are talking about is whatever two devices are attempting to transmit at the same time, what's going to happen? So in Ethernet hubs, what will happen is collision detection. In the Wi-Fi or wireless LAN, what will happen is collision avoidance, which means they try as much as possible to avoid the collision from taking place. In the Ethernet hubs, the collision actually happens, but it is detected and they do something about it. So let's look at, let's look at a CD, collision detection. Now in collision detection, which is used by the Ethernet hubs, it works on half duplex. Whenever two devices try to send and receive data at the same time, it will result in a collision will happen because they work on a shared medium and only one gadget should be transmitting or receiving at a time. So a collision will be detected. Once the collision is detected, the devices will detect that the collision occurred and therefore they'll have to wait for a random period of time before they can be able to transmit again. So one device will have to wait for a certain period of time before it can transmit again. Okay, so collision actually gets to happen, but it is detected and then the devices wait for a random period of, of time. That is for the hubs. What about for the wireless? Where this collision avoidance? So wireless or w, WLANs or what's called the 802.11, IEEE 802.11, which only also operates on half duplex. So what happens is that Whatever, to, whatever a device is transmitting over the network, remember them, they avoid the collision as much as possible. So whatever device, a device wants to transmit traffic over the internet, maybe your phone is using the Wi-Fi and you are trying to browse either on WhatsApp or on Gmail or on YouTube. Eh? Your device will have to send a message called RTS, request to send. Request to send. And that message will go to the access point or the wireless router. But that message will be packaged with another message. It will be packaged with a time interval saying, for example, so let's say I'm a wireless device and I want to communicate on the wireless network and I want all the other devices to wait. So I'm going to send a message telling the access point or the wireless router that, uh, friends, I'm going to use the network for two microseconds so let no one else transmit over the network okay so it sends the message with that time duration needed for it to transmit after that duration when that time duration is done then the next device will do the same thing but this happens within a twinkle of i mean it happens so fast you can't even know that only one device uses the wireless network at a time not two of them all right now so that is that that is that so other devices on the shared medium will have to uh, wait for that inter time interval uh, and they will be the link will be unavailable for them until the other gadget uh, finishes that. Now let's talk about the frame. Basically this is just the structure. How does the frame look like? Okay. Of course we'll talk about the general data link layer frame, but we will talk about what is called the Ethernet frame, which implements the Ethernet technology which implements the Ethernet technology. So basically a frame looks like this. You can be able to see that. Um, let me just check my uh, pointer here. So you can see here, this is the general frame. I know you guys watch movies, so you've heard of what's called a trailer, okay? But this is gener general. This is how the frame looks. I mean, the frame looks like the frame has a header and the frame has a trailer. And what is it carrying inside it? The packet. So this is what is inside. And this uh, we have a packet. I mean, the header and the trailer of this particular uh, frame. 
of course inside the packet we have uh, inside the frame we have a packet inside the packet we have a segment and inside the segment we have data stream now the header is composed of what's called the frame start which is the basically it identifies the beginning of the frame and frame stop identifies the end of the frame we have a dressing here you know that a frame is a layer 2 uh, pdu protocol data unit and the kind of addressing found in a frame is actually a MAC address. So on the addressing part field here, it indicates the source and the destination MAC addresses, okay? The type here, the type is the type of layer three protocol, okay? That can be IPv4, IPv6, that can be still be uh, ICMP. So the type of the layer three protocol here, it doesn't indicate whether it doesn't indicate whether it is source or destination IP. No, that is not our business here. It only tells us the type of the protocol. Is it layer three? Is it layer two? I mean, is it IPv4 or is it IPv6? Then we have the control bit, which basically identifies some uh, flow control services, flow control services, which controls the flow, you know, the flow of frames from the uh, network passing through the data link layer as it goes down to the physical layer. Of course, the email we are carrying, the message we are carrying, it can be e email, it can be WhatsApp messages, it can be even, you know, YouTube video that you are watching, you know, all that a message will be carried inside here to check errors, because this device needs to check some errors. So it does what is called error detection. And that is the field that we have here to check if the frame has been corrupted in any way so that it's rejected, so that it is rejected. So. This is uh, the frame. This is how the frame, uh, the fields of the frame looks uh, uh, looks uh, look like. And we will talk about later on. Of course, we'll talk about the Ethernet frame. Now, you guys know very well, as I said a day before, that the, layer, the data link layer uses layer two frame because since layer two addresses, since data link is a layer two, uh, uh, it's a layer two, it's, it's a layer two. I mean, of the OSI. So the MAC address, which is a layer two address, is also called the physical address. And the, it's called a physical address because of a simple reason. Because that address is an address that comes with the device from the manufacturer. In fact, you cannot separate the two. The other name for this MAC address, it is also called the band in address. It's like it's been burned inside there. So it's the band in address. And it's normally found within the frame, as we've already said. And yesterday I was just talking to you guys, how does the MAC address change from device to device? So if PC, this gentleman here, okay. So let's say we have, um, let me just zoom this in. So if this gentleman seated here on his computer, he's going to send a message all the way to the to the server, the web server there. The message has to go through router R1 and router R2. Remember, every interface of the router has a unique MAC address. Every single interface has a unique MAC address. So this is how the traffic is going to uh, be moving. OK. This is how the traffic will move. So, traffic will move from the PC. From the PC, traffic will move to R1. The frame will have a source MAC address of, R, of PC here, and the destination MAC address will be for the first router interface, you know, the incoming router interface here. When the packet reaches, the frame reaches R1, uh, R1 has to de-encapsulate that frame to see the packet, then re-encapsulate that packet with a new frame, and the new frame will be having a source MAC address of this router interface here, and the destination MAC address will be for the next interface of the of R2. Okay, R2 receives the frame, de-encapsulates it, looks at the packet to compare the packet with the uh, the routing table, re-encapsulates the packet with a new frame which now has source MAC address of the outgoing router R2 interface 
and the destination MAC address will be for the sir for the server. So the MAC address changes from PC to router, router to router, and router to an another end device. But the IP address remains the same. The source will be 192.68.1.10, and the destination IP will be 172.16.1.99. All right, and that is very important to note, ladies and gentlemen. So it's important. This is something that I think I'm going to be just repeating it so that guys can be able to know exactly what that happens. Uh, you know, there are a few uh, technologies uh, that um, that were, were normally being used at this layer, including oh Ethernet. Me. Sorry? Yeah, excuse me. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm requesting if you can repeat that concept. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. I'll do that. I'll be ready to do that. Thank you. All right. So let's do this again. That's that's so good of you. So let's say we have this computer where the gentleman is seated. The gentleman is browsing on our web server here. Okay. And uh, the of course the the request will be uh, uh, created. You know the the message it wants to send to request to go to the server. So that will be composed on the application layer on the screen. Then the application encapsulated at the application on the uh, transport layer to form the segment. The segment is encapsulated at the network layer to form the packet, and the packet is given, of course, source and the destination IP. And I said the source IP will be this one, and the destination IP will be right here at 1.99. Then the packet is encapsulated into a frame, and the frame will have a source MAC address and destination MAC address. So the source MAC address of the frame will be that of this PC, okay? But the destination MAC address will not be of the server. The first destination MAC address will be for the router interface that the traffic enters through R1. Okay. Remember, I said every router interface has a MAC address of its own. Okay. So when the router R1 receives the frame, the router has to de encapsulate the frame. It's like remove the old frame because it needs to put a new frame on the packet. Okay. So the new frame from R1 to R2 will now have a source MAC address of the outgoing router interface here, and the destination MAC address will be for R2's entering interface here. R2 receives the frame. R2 has to de-encapsulate that frame, remove that frame, and put a new frame on the packet, and the new frame will be saying the source MAC address is now the outgoing router interface, and the destination MAC address is that of the server here. And that happened even if there are 1,000 routers. There's that process of encapsulation and encapsulation that has to happen. The last gadget, which is the server, is the one that will now finish the whole process of the encapsulation. It will receive the, of course, the traffic moves on the media, on the wire, in form of bits of zeros and ones. It will be encapsulated to see the frame. The frame will be encapsulated to see the packet. The packet will be encapsulated by the server to see the segment. The segment will be encapsulated by the device, the server, to see the data stream. And that's how the server is able to read what information was sent from the, uh, from the device the other side. Like I said, the IP address will remain the same. The IP address will remain from the source 1.10, 192.68.1.10, and the destination IP will be 172.16.1.99. Does that make sense? In a way? Yeah, yeah, thank you. All right, all right, thank you, thank you. Yeah, guys, feel free to, you know, just interrupt me if you don't get a concept. Uh, that's what I do best, and that's what I'm here for. All right. So, uh, the last thing to talk about here is just some technologies that some of them are old, we no longer use them, but some of them are still, you know, very applicable. So, for example, Ethernet is a very vibrant protocol, very, very common. And wireless, which is 802.11, is also very, very popular. The last three are legacy protocols, 
we used to have something called PPP, point-to-point -point protocol. We used to have what is called HDLC, the high level data link control. And we used to have something called frame relay, frame relay. All these are no longer being used because our major, our major protocol being used currently is basically ethernet and wireless, ethernet and wireless. Now, I think at this point now, I want us to talk about um, the ethernet. That the first one you see there, I want us to talk about uh, the Ethernet and basically look at how does the Ethernet do uh, its job? How does the Ethernet uh, do its job? All right, 